What's up everyone, my name is Alex, I'm one of the co-founders of MyInvestingClub.com and I wanna let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's gonna be available at MyInvestingClub.co. The link is gonna be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. Yeah, so hopefully, uh, yeah, this one stays recorded and I don't have to re-record this one. I, I, I cleared up a lot of this space from the last webinar. Um, the main, main thing is that I had like two or three recordings where I recorded my screen and never hit unrecord. I had like 30 hours of like, NVIDIA high definition record time, like holding up a hundred gigs. So got rid of that. <laughs> so today I'm this one's gonna be kind of a rant and I did one rant once before earlier, but that was a negative rant. And this one's gonna be more of a positive. Before we get into that, we have some some market stuff we wanna get through. All right, so the market center. So last week where we were at, uh, the SPY was showing hesitation at the 280 level. And I thought that like we would be somewhat, that we would somewhat kind of stay still uh, until the first couple of states opened, which we, we actually opened like this week, which I didn't think we were gonna start, but a couple of states have started these pre-opens. Uh, and then I expect the pre-pricing to cont continue, which we kind of did. We pushed, we broke through that 280 barrier this week. Is there a specific time when the hot check of the day shows up on, on a scanner? Is that always in the pre-market seat? Yeah, yeah I, I, I would say so. And, you know, it usually they pop up around like uh, 7 a.m. Like David just, uh, you know, told you as well. And also depends on the flow too, the momentum. You have to see, you check the flow and like the news too. And combine all those factors, you can tell, you know, which one is hot check or not. Yeah, and I would say I would say that um, the hot check always presents itself within the first 45 minutes. Like, I mean, 45 minutes, it's in it, it's even it's even pushing a little late i would say the hot chick always appears within the first 30 minutes or pre-market yeah. pre-market to first 30 like after that like if, if a runner happens after the first hour it could still it can become a runner but most of the time those become like tomorrow plays for me and then i saw it stalling here and this is when i posted this in chat i was like if this over nine blurry fails we can finally see our death candle right because this is where if all of these shorts we're gonna lose patience and all of these shorts we're gonna squeeze it out this is where it was gonna happen hence the long here like this is where i thought it might happen but the fact that we stalled here i was like okay if this final i call them flurries right like stop out where it just goes over and, and tries to make shorts nervous at one last time you know near the end of reversal time it's three o'clock this is where if it doesn't go here you know where else are we gonna go if this isn't what squeezes us higher if we get back under nine i think we can get our death candle and we did get the death candle so i you know we get under nine i, I put this i put the starter back on i put that the same thought as the, the blood in the water crack i put that starter back on this time i actually wait for us to break 850 and i you know and i short some more and so here's where i kind of merged like this is where i was honestly a little bit fuzzy on whether or not like what should i do like because i shorted into this crack and it you know i'm shorting this has a trend break crack where 850 just failed and like here we are we're bouncing but i'm not so keen to cover this one as i was right here because this was the death candle this is the you know the biggest volume candle not probably not of the day i think the morning was greater but it was the biggest volume candle all day this was a death candle it was a failed candle through nine so Halfway there's, almost, to. there's almost two trades in play here the overextended trend break which broke but then there's also the death candle okay just death candle let me short the yep. bounce death candle i had more risk on here than I intended. But the way I saw it is I kind of had two trades on at a time. Like this is a death candle bounce roll. I'm still comfortable as long as it's under nine. We get the crack here and I do. I take all of these shares off. So I have a nice like 870-ish average here. But then we when this one fails, I had I had orders to cover at like eight, eight and seven fifty. And when this came, when this didn't tank, I'm like, dude, we're starting, it's already 30 minutes to go covering this position. And good thing I did because I would have covered at nine over here. You know, I would have covered at nine with the kind of size I had on the trade. I got out like I got out for like, you know, roughly break even after this, you know, roughly break, maybe a little gain. I, I classified it as break even. But the thing about this trade is <laughs> I kind of did everything right here. And this is just, this is what the trade kind of looks like when you do everything right and it just doesn't work out. This happens 
happens all the time. This is what I call, like I did my job. I put myself in position. You don't know if it's going to work out, but the point is you put yourself in position and you know, God speed, you let the stock do the rest. Like I did my part. I entered where I did. I covered where I did and the stock didn't want to give me what I want. So I know once it recovers, there's a decent chance it'll pop to nine. I know if it does, I'm going to cover. So, you know, when the trade didn't do what I want, I failed. Unfortunately, dude, like I wanted this to work so bad. Like, was I disappointed in the trade? Yes. That doesn't mean- I'm I gonna... think maybe the time of the day, if it was like at two, then it would, would have, have, you know, have, worked nicely. I would have helped, but that, that 3.30-ish, that 3.30-ness started to get to me. I didn't like, I didn't want to be holding this at 3.30. <laughs> it was already, it was already sub-ideal late. Like it should have happened here. Like it was already kind of late in the day for the tank. Like, how do I know if it's the best entry, right? How do I know it won't just rip and tank right, th rip right through VWAP when I short <laughs> the road just tank right through support? How do I know it just won't stop me out? How do I know that it just won't stop or rip right back after I get out? You don't, right? You don't know that crap, but you don't have to know that crap. Once you've accepted the risk, uh, the trade is the, you know, the, the trade is about you executing. You don't have to know that stuff. All you have to know is what you're going to trade, how you're going to trade it, and don't be a pussy about it, right? That's it. Those are the three elements. Yep. What you're going to trade, how you're going to trade and now now's the time to don't be a pussy because if, if you have this but what if crap it doesn't matter about one and two if you're going to get to step three and be a pussy about it you know we don't know what the stock is going to do all we know is what we are going to do that's perfect it. bro that's perfect it. like you don't know what the stock's going to do but you can know what you're going to do so when you aren't a, a bitch you know, pussy, whatever, whatever. <laughs> when you're not a pussy about it, you are more likely to be in control of your trades, trade your setups with confidence and take your winning trades instead of letting them go by, right? And so I made a list for you. Thou shalt not utter the following words, yeah, right? I love that list, bro. I love that. Dude, no, but what if? So cool. No, but what if? How do I know? That's off your list too. I thought it might, I wasn't sure how much the one time uh, Tom is so cool. Yeah, the best one. Yeah, the, uh, the yeah one. none of those. Um, this scared me. Instead of saying this scared me, you say after that tank, I thought it was a less likely probability of me getting my set. That's so much different than this scared me. One's emotion basis and one is technical analysis based. And it seems like it's splitting hairs, but those hairs are the difference between emotionally trading or emotionally not trading and, and not trading for a reason or trading for this reason. I was going to yeah. follow my plan, but right. And it is a big one. I was going to follow my plan, but maybe this time will be different. All of these are off of your list. If you catch yourself saying this, you're in the wrong state of mind. Like, you know, you've probably gotten step one, step two, and you and you, and you just ducked out of, of step three. I just want to add something here. You know, the only thing you have completely control over is how much you're willing to risk or how much you're willing to lose. That's it. Anything else? I don't care. I don't know if I know I would bet my house on that, right? Why yeah. would I be sitting here? Right. If right. I know if I this do. APR, the eight lines going to work. I just going to, you know, borrow some money from the bank, <laughs> <laughs> mortgage my house, use all the BV, you know, everything. Just put in that short out stock at eight and cover at six, right? Easy. But yeah. It can come down to, dude, I know that in the middle of the day that like VWAP normally rejects the first time, yeah. but maybe this time will be different. I don't want to take this trade. I hundred share. I won't even take let me just see what happens because maybe this time will be different and then all of a sudden it just tank it just rejects 15 cents and you're like that could have been 15 bucks in your pocket right and then as you scale up 300 shares that could have been 45 bucks in your pocket and and you know it can be a small wallet pattern that adds up and you take those trades over time one of these is going to stunt that one of those is going to stunt it and you're going to have gotten to the third step and you're going to pussy out. Q and I just needed to hear that as well. You know, just, you know, to remind myself, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm reminding myself every day is that my goal is to make it into the next day. I don't want to be today, be my last day of trading. I always remind myself of that because if I'm reckless, if I'm not ready, shorting CAPR, right? 200 million yesterday. All it takes is one stock to wipe you out and you're done. Captain Heinz. Yeah, I, uh, this is a classic one. <laughs> classic. Shoulda. <laughs> Questions? Questions, guys? Yeah. And by the way, guys, we're doing calls daily from Monday yep. to Friday. So please take advantage of that. I mean, you know, if you want to share some, you, if, I mean, if you want to go over some charts and, you know, ask anything, I mean, just, you know, reach out. And, and like this, this, this rant was brought to you probably by like the question that we often get the most is how did you know it was going to work? Right. How did you know that it was going to work? And that's what <laughs> I don't know. It. It's like, dude, I don't, <laughs> I just know that if, 
it was a choice of me entering this position or not entering this position. I wanted to be in this position. Yeah, and that's just the, how do you know? Like, how did you know that was the best price? Well, I didn't. I, yeah, I, 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 I was talking to one of the members today. I, I, I won't say his name, but it was like uh, James. asking me, dude, you know, I traded CAPR. I did here. I saw the death candle right there and there. And I asked him, what is your edge? And he just quiet. And I said, what is your edge? You know, stock traded 200 million. What the heck you doing there? I mean, what the fuck you doing? doing shorting that stuff is that something you doing regularly every day and say no so there you go that's it yeah and find your edge guys you know just focus on one and try to do that daily day in and day out with one setup and try to make i don't know ten dollars twenty dollars yeah consistently for a month or two and then you know you can work from there I, I and there's one more thing i forgot to say but i wanted to add now of course a lot of this comes down to experience right like like you know as an experienced trader will have an easier time figuring out what they like to trade and what how they want to trade it and it eventually becomes easier for a more experienced trader however yeah. that doesn't mean that you can't figure it out and it doesn't mean that like just because your confidence level might be lower than ours but guess what you can alter your size to where your confident level is enough to be in control of the trade that's ultimately what it's all about like Val said like you could put a, a hundred shares down there like if you're exactly. wrong you're gonna lose what 20 or 30 bucks can you handle that and if you're like well yeah i can handle twenty dollars well then take the trade this is how you learn how to trade anyway this is how you're going to build the stronger confidence seeing it work right but like exactly it's like just take that hundred if you're if you ever find yourself saying any of these words or like pulling that hesitant trigger well then make the trigger 100 shares or 50 and be like what is it where's the hesitation now it's not money there's a lot of hard work in it uh you know you have to kind of experience it you know track it go over it you know every day you need to see the outcome of 500 1000 trade for you to pick something you know up right but you know you need time but if you try to size up and try to speed up the process you might not gonna give it you know enough time for a room to grow or the kind of learning curve you're not gonna get to that point all right yeah thanks guys thanks you guys have any questions and here's the thing about yeah stops guys no one likes to fucking stop out like it's yeah. no one likes to stop out. oh dude guess what i got to stop out i but, hate losing even fucking ten dollars i hate losing you still have them thanks val for coming oh i didn't even know alex was here he was so quiet. Alex is everywhere, bro. He's everywhere. Just quiet, but everywhere. Yeah, you see that? Did you say Forex just now, Austin? I'm, no, I'm, I didn't. That's what I was doing on my phone. I always have Forex. I'm trading on my phone. All right, I'm going to go to bed. Almost Robin, 3 a.m. here. Robin Hood app. All right. Thanks, guys. See you, guys. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.